Why do we learn about bearings? Where do we use them in real life? Bearings are incredibly useful when you're traveling in a straight line, i.e. when you're traveling on a plane or by sea. Think about how you travel on a day-to-day -day basis. What do you use to tell where you're going? Well, you use things like landmarks, for example, shops that you may know, uh, big buildings that you may know, and also what street names you have. But what if there are no street names? What if there are no landmarks? I want you to imagine for a second that you and I are in a big open field, and I want you to imagine that you are completely blindfolded. How exactly can I tell you how to get from one side of the field to a place on the other side of the field? Well, the best thing I can do is turn you in a certain direction and then tell you to walk straight for a certain number of steps or if I know how quickly you walk for a certain amount of time. That way I can ensure that you end up in the correct place on the other side of the field or wherever I want you to be on that side of the field. So out at sea or in the air, there are no landmarks. Planes travel above the cloud line and so can't see anything below it. And, sea, and out at sea, there's absolutely nothing to actually tell where you're going. Except for the stars and the sun. And this is exactly what our ancestors did before the 13th century. In the 13th century, that is when compasses became widely used. But the thing is, there's two main problems with using the sun or the stars as a means for navigation. So first of all, let's start off with the sun. So as we know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. This means that if you're facing the rising sun, you can know exactly where north, south, east and west are. If you're facing east, i.e. the rising sun, then you know that south is to your right and north is to your left and it's vice versa if you're facing the setting sun. Now this sounds really, really useful. You know where north, east, south, and west are, so that means you know if you're traveling in the right direction. But there's a problem with this. Depending on where you are on the planet, and also what time of year it is, the sun doesn't rise directly in the east and set directly in the west. It sets in that general direction, and it rises in that general direction, but if you look at the sun throughout different periods of the year, it doesn't rise straight over it. For example, in my house, it rises straight over my house in the summer, but in the winter, it rises at a much lower level. This means that at best, we have a general idea of where we're heading, not an actual specific measurement. Okay, then what about stars? Well, stars are fixed in the sky over the time periods that we're actually talking about. Over thousands of years, they do move, but for our purposes, unless we're thousands of years old, they do generally speaking, stay exactly the same. And that sounds really good, but there are still two main issues with this. One is that you have to wait until night time. Now, night time, depending on the time of year, may only be eight hours. So let's say you start traveling in the morning. It means you're going to be waiting anywhere from eight hours in the winter to 16 hours in the peak of summer to figure out if you're actually heading in the right direction or not. And of course, the second issue, which we're very, very, very used to in the UK, is that it could be cloudy, in which case you can't actually see the stars. And then compasses were invented and widely used, as is the idea of north. This is a way of navigating no matter what time of day it is, what time of year it is, and no matter what the weather is. How cool. Okay, so great. We know which direction north, south, east, and west are at any time of day, any time of year, no matter the weather. But... We also need to be able to communicate this with other people and also put these directions on maps. Now, of course, when we're traveling, we can't now use north, south, east and west or even north, east, north, west and south, east, south, west either because we need to be a lot more specific than that. If you check out the diagram that I'm, talk I'm using in the video right now, you can see that the differences between northwest, uh, west and southwest results in us ending up in the completely wrong continent, which of course is terrible. And so this is where we use bearings. Bearings allow us to turn and face a very, very specific direction and allow us to move in that direction long term. But what is a bearing? Well, simply put, a bearing is the angle that goes clockwise from north. And of course, it's always given as a three digit number. But why? Good question. Have you ever been on a call to someone and then the call starts breaking up and it starts getting a bit choppy? This generally happens because cell service gets a bit shaky and of course Wi-Fi connection also gets a bit choppy and as a result you miss certain parts of the conversation. Now this happens all the time in the air and at sea, especially because they have to use radio which again sounds a bit staticky at the best of times. So have a listen. Okay, so what? Well have a listen to this clip for a second. 124. What number did I say? Hard to tell, right? I mean, maybe you heard it, but you're a bit unsure of exactly what I said. 
Well, I said the number 324, but the 3 was very garbled. Now, of course, if you heard a 24, but I said 324, there is a world of difference in terms of bearings with regard to that. In fact, 24 and 324 are almost completely opposite directions to each other. So, how do we fix this? Well, what the international community decided is that we will always give a three-digit number for bearings. So even if we're using the number 24, for example, we'll say 024. That way, if you only hear two digits, you know that you need to ask them to repeat. And if you still hear two digits, then you need to ask them to repeat again. Now, this is brilliant because it essentially means that you can't get the wrong number. So the final question I hear you may be asking is why don't we just use Google Maps? like we do on land, right? Like if I want to go to Richmond, for example, I can use Google Maps. That's a really good question and it's better than you might think. So first of all, is that in the air or overseas, there is no internet, simply put. So the reason for that is that internet comes from cell service towers and also through cables on the ground. Neither of those exist overseas. Now, until someone like Starlink actually manages to give worldwide coverage via satellites, we can't really use Google Maps at sea because there's no internet connection. The second reason is simply put, there's no real money in it. Now, the reason why Google Maps is so useful on land is because there are multiple directions to take. If you want to go here to your local shop or to school, chances are there's more than one direction that you need to be given, right? You need to turn left or turn right, catch a bus, etc. At sea or in the air, you travel in pretty much straight lines. In fact, airplanes always travel in straight lines and boats travel in mostly straight lines. So simply put, it's not really that useful if we can just use a bearing. If I say to you, hey, face this direction and keep going straight, do you really need an app telling you that? Or can you just walk in a straight line until you get to your destination? So that's the main reasons why we don't really bother using Google Maps.